Hi, and welcome back to this tutorial series, where we are going over the various options available to 5th edition campaigns within Fantasy Grounds Unity. In this video, we will be going over the remaining options that are primary controls for how Fantasy Grounds itself sets up and configures and displays information related to combat encounters through visual or audio representations and how combat itself flows. So with that, let's get started. The first option we'll cover in this video is called Token Bar Colors, which I honestly feel is in the wrong section, as it affects tokens on a map rather than anything within the combat tracker. And what this does is it changes how the color itself changes in relation to the health icon of a given token, be it an NPC or a player, when it is placed on the map. In standard mode, which is the default, the colors will start at a deep green, and as the player or NPC takes more damage, the colors will slowly shift to a deep red, before vanishing once the character or NPC themselves has been reduced to zero hit points. This is a gradual shift in the overall colors that you will see in the icon, and it works in a way where it passes through an entire gradient from green through to yellow through to orange and then finally to red before disappearing from the icon. However, when using tiered mode, this is going to happen a little bit more gradually in the overall numerical scale and the colors themselves are going to shift far more suddenly because these changes occur at the 0, 1, 25, 50, 75, and 100% calculations when damage is being dealt to a character or NPC. As you can see here, I already have a character on a map, but it has this dot here. Unfortunately, that is not an overly clear indicator for us in order to be able to go through and show what this is going to look like. So I'm going to make a small adjustment, and I'm going to drop down this token listing here and change this dot to a bar so that we can more gradually see what's going to happen here in relation to this icon. I'm just going to minimize that for now. I still have the setting in standard mode, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly increase the damage that is being done to this particular barbarian just by manually modifying the values here, and you're going to see how the color gradient shifts here in relation to this bar. So if I say, for example, 10 hit points, we don't see much in the way of any gradient shift, but we did see the bar drop a little bit. Now, if I gradually increase that to, say, 50 hit points, you'll see that the shift is now towards a lighter green. 75, we are now in a yellow. If I go over 120, we're now into an orange. And then finally, if we get near 175, we see the red gradient. And then if I do 226, we will see that the health bar status indicator completely disappears from the icon. If I change this setting to tiered mode, what will now happen is that this will happen a lot more suddenly. And for the purposes of showing that example, I'm just simply going to update the total number of hit points to 100 for now. And then I'm going to do one hit point of damage. You'll see that it immediately changes to a light color. I'm going to do 24 points of damage. You'll see that we're still green, but if I change that to 25, it now changes to yellow. Sort of a yellowish orange. Same thing at 49, it stays that same color. And then at 50, it is now a red. A slightly light red, because there is a sudden difference between 50 and 75. You'll see that that red is now darker. And then finally, when I go to 100, once again, it completely disappears from the character. And that is all that this particular setting actually does. So let's move on to the next one. The next option is called Turn Show Effects on Notice. And this is used to simply display whether there's an effect on a given character or NPC as their turn rolls around within the combat tracker and display that in the chat window. It has two available settings, on or off, with off being the default setting. This is also a setting that works in conjunction with the turn, show notice to players option that is the next option we will cover shortly after this one. With the setting on, if I place the action token here next to the Hound of Ill Omen, you will see that from the Dungeon Master's point of view, as well as from the player's point of view, an entry here shows up in the chat log that shows it's the turn, the turn for the Hound of Ill Omen, and that they have a charmed effect in place. If I turn the setting off and I do the exact same thing, you will simply see that the turn indicator is just that the Hound of Ill Omen happens to have their turn. There will be no effects listed next to the name of that particular creature. However, if I move this token to this hill giant, which also happens to have a charmed effect on it, we will see that the players didn't receive any form of turn notification for that hill giant, but the dungeon master has and the effect is listed there. That is because the setting that we have to toggle in order to actually show that to the players is set to friendly, not to all, which I will cover in the next setting. Thus, players will not see any hostile creature 
that gains their turn in the combat tracker. And that next option, called Turn Show Notice to Players, will change what players will see in relation to turn-related notifications, whether they are able to see all notifications, regardless of whether the creature is hostile or friendly, whether they are able to only see friendly notifications, or whether they're able to see notifications at all. Of the three settings, friendly is the one that is the default setting, and it's most likely going to be the one that's active on any given campaign because it leaks the least amount of information to players. With the setting friendly, players are only going to see when allies themselves gain access to a turn. And as you can see here, as I move through many of these particular creatures here, even though I'm not doing it in order, you'll see that the dungeon master is receiving the turn notification, but the player is only receiving those related to the Hound of Ill Omen, the ape, and the barbarian-related character because those are the only ones that are an ally of the barbarian. However, with the setting on, and even if the show effects on notice is turned on, players will receive notifications of when hostile creatures are gaining their turn, but they will not receive notification about any effects that happen to be on that NPC. That part still remains anything related to an ally. So you can see there that the third hill giant here which has a charmed effect on it, did not show that it had a charmed effect on the player side, but it did on the dungeon master side. Whereas the Hound of Ill Omen showed it in both cases. Even with this setting set to all, if a particular creature is hidden in the combat tracker, so you can see here that I clicked on this little eye symbol, if I give that creature a turn, you will see that the dungeon master saw that they got a turn notification, but the players have not. So it is still possible to hide creatures within the combat tracker and not leak out that you have an extra creature there to the players. When the setting is set to off, it doesn't matter whether I move between an ally of the player or any hostile creatures, the player's not going to see any turn indication notified within the chat log, although they will still receive the audible alerts associated with any notification when their own turn comes up. A new option that is now available is called Turn Skip Dead Non-Ally, and it has two possible states, on or off, with off being the default. What this will do is when it is set on, if there is a creature within the combat tracker that happens to be dead, so in other words, they're reduced to zero hit points, it will skip them. So I'm going to go ahead and actually execute this turn and advance it until we get to that hill giant. So in theory, the next target that actually should get any form of action is this hill giant here. It should skip completely past this particular hill giant, which it has done. I personally will generally remove a non-player character from the combat tracker as soon as it is marked dead or dying, unless that particular NPC is one that the party themselves should be looking at trying to save or can save. However, my players have learned that that is usually a clue that they're supposed to do something with that particular NPC, so they will usually jump on that as soon as the combat encounter is completely done and do what they have to do in order to attempt to either recover that particular creature or save that creature so that it isn't going to die at the end of combat. The setting will now allow me to change how I do that by allowing me to simply leave dead NPCs in the combat tracker and not give the player a hint that all of the NPCs that are there on the ground are ones that should be saved. Thus, it adds more risk to the overall encounter that they might have missed something important in relation to those characters. If the floor is cluttered with 15 different dead goblins or various kinds of creatures, and they're supposed to save one of those in order to gather information related to their campaign because it's the only source of information, and they unintentionally killed it, well, they're kind of at a loss. So I'm going to have to try work on finding a way to either bring that information to them through another avenue, or they're going to have to take the time to try to figure out whether there's something there that that particular NPC can provide to them by either recovering them, saving them, and identifying which one it was, or working through some other avenue. With this setting off, dead NPCs will still acquire their turn. And that is something that can be a little bit irritating because now as a dungeon master, I now have to advance the turn to go on to the next creature. With that skip there, it'll automatically skip that regardless of whether they're visible or invisible. So you may have noticed that when I did this previously, they were non-visible to the characters. In this case, it is visible. And if I set that setting back, it will still skip that character. So it doesn't matter on that visibility state. But with this off, it would stop there on that particular hill giant, forcing me to advance the turn to the next active creature in the list, whether it's a player or whether it's an NPC. The next option is called Turn Skip Hidden Actor, and it is another setting that has either an on or an off state, with on being the default. 
And what this does is it forces the combat tracker to skip NPCs that you have flagged as not yet visible to the players. So if I once again hide this particular hill giant, let's get rid of the damage that they've suffered so that they're not quote unquote down. If I move this token back to the ape and then I advance to this hill giant, you'll see that it skipped that hill giant. And that's because they're not visible to the players. They might be around a wall on the other side of a hallway, still within hearing range of what's going on, but not necessarily within some form of visual indicator to the players that there's another hill giant on the other side of that wall. It's a great option to use when you're setting up an encounter that could have additional risk to it by having creatures nearby that might overhear the combat that's about to ensue. And thus, if they perceive that that combat is happening, you can now bring them into the encounter because they're already in the combat tracker. And all you have to do is make them visible as they enter in the actual arena where the combat is taking place. There are two locations that you can use in order to make a particular creature visible. There's this eye option up here, which affects all NPCs on a particular combat tracker, and that's all the hostile NPCs. It does not touch anything that's classified as an ally. And toggling this will toggle their visibility states. I'm going to do that again, but this time I'm going to pop open the player screen so that you can see what happens on their screen. So if you look now, right now all NPCs are classified as hidden to the players. If I toggle this particular button in the upper left corner, all of the NPCs that are in the combat tracker now become visible. So if you're trying to hide a couple of NPCs, you're not going to want to hit this upper eye icon in order to make the selective list of NPCs that you want them to see visible. So to do that, what you do is you click on each individual icon below the name and the icon of the actual creature in the combat tracker, and that will selectively make them visible to the players. This way, let's say that this particular hill giant is 200 feet away, but still within hearing range of a particular combat encounter, whereas these ogres are just around the corner, not visible to the players, but they are definitely going to get involved as soon as combat ensues. This one might have to make an extreme perception roll in order to detect that combat is en route and taking place. Whereas they might not get involved in this particular combat encounter, but they're still there down the hallway if the players continue on in that direction. With this setting off, what you will notice is that inside of the player's end of the combat tracker, the turn will seem to quote unquote vanish as if the players had reached the end of the actual round. When in fact, that is not actually the case. All that has happened is that this particular hill giant who happens to be hidden isn't visible to the players. Meaning that you've now given them a clue that something is going on in relation to that particular hill giant or another creature that happens to be involved in the scenario. So the players are going to be a lot more wary because you've now dropped that particular clue to them. And it's one of the reasons why I will actually leave this setting set to on simply because it will skip this hill giant. It will advance the token to the next active actor, if you will, inside of the combat tracker. And then if there are three NPCs that are hidden to the players, it will skip to the end of the turn. The players now assume that they're at the end of the round. In this case, it, they would be correct. But it now gives you time to move those additional tokens around in the event that you have to and not drop a hint to the players that you're doing something else related to that. You might just be a little bit slow getting the next round started. That's really all that comes down to. The last option in this category is called turn stop at round start. And this is also an option that simply has an on or an off state with off being the default. When this setting is on, it'll actually prevent this combat tracker from starting the round, the next round in relation to the next series of initiatives, if you will, at the end of the last creature's turn. What I mean by that is if this ogre happens to have their turn and they pass the next, next actor token on to the end of the round, the combat tracker isn't immediately handing it off to the Hound of Ill Omen in this particular case. It's waiting for you to do something. And this is the opportunity that I use in order to go through and move creatures that might not be visible in relation to the combat tracker. Once I've completed moving those creatures around, I then click this to start the new round in relation to the combat tracker. And you can see here that we went from a round of four to a round of five. With this setting off, if I go ahead and drop the action here on this particular ogre, and then I click next actor, it's going to immediately allow the Hound of Ill Omen to go. Essentially, it's not going to give you time to deal with those hidden creatures and get them into the next set of locations where they need to be in order to come into play in relation to the next combat round if they're going to be there for the next combat round. I will personally leave this setting on because I prefer to have that duration at the end of the round in order to deal with any creatures that could be classified as hidden. I also use that opportunity to deal with any sort of housekeeping 
things that I have to deal with from a dungeon master's point of view outside of combat that might turn into combat related scenarios if those particular creatures that are just slightly out of the edges of the perceptive range make a really good roll. Whichever option you decide to choose is going to be entirely up to you and it comes down to how comfortable you are with going through and doing other things while combat is actively running and keeping the players informed of the state of their combat attacks or spell castings or whatever. However, that does cover all of the combat related settings that we have to deal with as well as one particular token setting. So let's move on to the next video in the series. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.